Rudyard Kipling, England's most distinguished modern poet, achieved fame for his vivid word paintings of the exotic East. But for Kipling, the East wasn't the other. It was home. He was born in Bombay in 1865, at the height of the British Empire, to cultured middle-class Anglo-Indian parents. The India of Kipling's childhood was full of color and warmth, and its sights and sounds nourished the sensitive young child. He later wrote of Bombay, mother of cities to me, for I was born in her gate between the palms and the sea, where the world ends steamers wait. But when he was six, Kipling and his little sister were sent to drab, cold England to be schooled. Their foster parents were less than loving, and Kipling retreated into a world of imagination. He developed his writing skills at boarding school and returned to India aged 16 to work for a newspaper. He said of his reunion with his native land that his English years fell away, never to come back in full strength. Four years later, in 1886, Kipling's first collection of verse was published, and the six volumes of short stories that followed drew on his Indian experiences and were a hit in England. Three years later, Kipling set out on a series of voyages through the East to the United States, where he met Mark Twain, and back to England. After two years in his mother country, where he had another novel published, Kipling traveled to South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, and India on the advice of his doctors as he was recovering from a nervous breakdown. Kipling married the following year and moved to Vermont with his American wife, Carrie, where he produced some of his most famous works, including The Jungle Book. He was writing in the, from the 1880s onwards, and that was a time when there was no radio, no television, no movies, writers were very, very important people up in the public mind. And Kipling was far and away the most popular writer in the English-speaking world for about 25 years. Kipling and his wife had two daughters in Vermont and would have been happy to stay there for the rest of their lives. But after a dispute with Carrie's mentally unbalanced brother, the family went back to England, where a son was born later tragically to die, aged 18, in the First World War. Kipling's fame continued to grow, and he was considered the People's Laureate of England and the Poet of the Empire. It was in England that he wrote the famous Just So stories and Kim. In 1907, Kipling became the youngest ever recipient of the Nobel Prize for Literature and the first English-language writer to receive that distinction. At the awards ceremony, the Swedish Academy said it awarded the prize to Kipling as a tribute of homage to the literature of England, so rich in manifold glories, and to the greatest genius in the realm of narrative that that country has produced in our times. In the 1920s, University of St. Andrews students elected Kipling as Lord Rector. He succeeded playwright J.M. Barry to the honorary position at Scotland's oldest university. Like many of his era, Kipling was an unapologetic imperialist who strongly supported Britain's colonial ambitions. Kipling believed it was his country's duty to spread civilization across the world. Less than a decade after Kipling's death in 1936, the empire crumbled in the wake of World War II, and Kipling's blindness to the faults of imperialism put him out of favor in his homeland. But over time, Kipling's writings have come to be seen as products of their time and reassessed as great works of literature in their own right. His children's books continue to enthrall new generations with their thrilling exploits and exotic characters.